Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Fluorescence Guided Surgery in Esophageal and Gastric Surgery. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. All attendees are in listen-only mode. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, and we will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Today's webinar is being recorded. Today's presenter is Dr. Lanzarini. Dr. Lanzarini is a Associate Professor, Faculty of Medicine, University of Chile, Staff Gastrointestinal Surgery, Department of Surgery, Hospital Clinico, University of Chile, and Clinica University of Los Angeles, Santiago, Chile. Dr. Lanzarini is the Director of the Society of Surgeons of Chile. He is also the past president of the Department of Gastro Gastroesophageal Surgery, Society of Surgeons of Chile. He is a specialist in general and gastrointestinal surgery at the University of Chile Clinical Hospital, where he has been part of the staff since 2008. In 2013, he completed a training stay at the Hospital Del Mar, Universidad Automona, de Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. Since 2018, he is the head of postgraduate teaching of the general surgery program. He has developed his professional and academic career dedicated to minimally invasive techniques for benign and malignant pathology of the esophagus and stomach with outstanding participation in academic activities in Chile and Latin America. He is a member of several scientific societies and participates in editorial committees at the national and international level. Over to you, Dr. Lanzarini. Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for this invitation. It's a honor for me uh, to do uh, this presentation of this interesting topic. Um, fluorescence guided surgery in esophageal and gastric surgery. Well, um, to make this presentation, I asked myself two questions. Can we determine if a tissue is well or badly perfused intraoperatively? Can we perform a fluorescence guided lymphadenectomy? Trying to answer this question, this presentation. In this presentation, I will show you some evidence and some of my personal experience in gastric and esophageal surgery using fluorescence with ICG. In the last two decades, we have seen important advances in video imaging technology, which have improved surgeon performance and therefore patient safety. In this context, fluorescence guided surgery further improves vision and shows greater anatomical detail intraoperatively. One of the most relevant uses of fluorescence is the possibility of measuring tissue perfusion in real time. We know that performing an anastomosis in poorly oxygenated tissue implies a greater risk of leakage. This is why fluorescence is currently being used in different areas of the digestive surgeries. Probably the area with the greatest evidence of decreased leakage is in colorectal surgery, although there is also important evidence in esophageal surgery, as we will see later. It is also being investigated in bariatric surgery, where probably the greatest utility will be in revisional surgery, only um, two in the surgery of intestinal obstruction, mesocolon section, and so on. The dilution 
that uh, I use is uh, 25 milligrams in 10 milliliters of distilled water and uh, one milliliter, milliliter is injected every time you want to measure the perfusion. It is important uh, to recognize the phases uh, after injection. You can see in the video, 30 to 40 seconds pass from when the anesthesiologist injects the ring until it reaches the arteries. Then the arterial phase lasts approximately 20 seconds and the venous phase another 20 seconds. Then between 60 and 90 seconds after injecting, the decision must be made and the well perfused area uh, it's uh, market. This is an example. It is a gastric bypass in which uh, in which there is a doubt in the gastrointestinal anastomosis as an uh, ischemic segment. This can occur if uh, two lines of mechanical sutures are parallel and close in this type of anastomosis. Um, what we can see is that you will see an ischemic triangular segment. You are seeing the ICG test and you can see a triangular segment. This does not mean that the anastomosis will fail, but it may increase the risk. The bowel, it's perfect, the pouch, it's perfect, but there is a little segment of ischemic tissue. In infrared vision, you can see this part black. That is, that is the ischemic segment. Uh, in this case, uh, an imagination of the ischemic part was performed and the patient was well. This is another example where we see jejuno jejunostomy and the jejuno looks well perfused. Mucosa looks great too. This is another example. It's a patient uh, with advanced gastric cancer and post neoadjuvant chemotherapy with FLOT who to achieve a R0 resection, I had to perform a distal splenopancreatectomy and resect a large part of the mesocolon by direct infiltration. So uh, the question was, uh, do I have to resect this, the transverse column too? And the answer was given to me by the fluorescence. Without fluorescence, I will have resected it. You can see in infrared vision, the transverse column, it's well perfused. Fortunately, it was not necessary to remove the transverse column. But without fluorescence, I will have resected. Um, what about the oncological surgery? Uh, ICG is being used in cancer surgery for sentinel lymph node detection in breast cancer, melanoma, rectum and gastric cancer, and uh, as a lymphanectomy itself. In gastric cancer surgery, ICG is mainly applied as a navigation tool for tumor localization, sentinel lymph node dissection and a radical lymphadenectomy. Bas basically through peritumor injection of ICG performed one day before of surgery or at the time of the surgery. What about sentinel lymph node uh, in gastric cancer? Well, our uh, colleagues in Japan and Korea are developing a surgical strategy based on the Sentinel lymph node status. 
the concept concept of sentinel basin dissection. This involves removing at least five sentinel nodes. And the main aim is uh, uh, limited gastric resections, avoiding unnecessary lymphatic dissection. Of course, when uh, sentinel lymph nodes are negative for metastasis. And what are the clinical, uh, the critical points in clinical practice? Well, a multidirectional lymphatic drainage of the stomach and a skip metastasis that can be up to 12% and also a micrometastasis. Uh, there are multiple publications uh, on this topic today, but it's uh, still under investigation. In my country, less than 20% of patients are diagnosed, diagnosed at an early stage, but it's a problem. I show you the systematic review and meta-analysis, the investigated ICG-guided gastric cancer sentinel lymph node mapping, um, include 13 clinical studies evaluating more than 900 patients, and the result uh, indicated high sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy for the ICG sentinel node method. Um, the Senorita trial is the, uh, is the only phase three RCT active on this topic. It is conducted on patients with uh, early gastric cancer, less than three centimeters, and compares the survival outcomes of patients undergoing laparoscopic stomach preserving, preserving surgery with sentinel node dissection versus standard surgery. Uh, it means uh, with D1. Uh, plus uh, lymphadenectomy. This is another Korean study that evaluates the feasibility of sentinel node navigation surgery in gastric cancer after non-curative ESD. Currently, these patients are going to conventional surgery. Uh, it, that means gastrectomy with lymphadenectomy. Perhaps this will be this will not be necessary in the future after non-curative ESD, depending on the result of uh, sentinel lymph nodes. Another application for ICG is the lymph node mapping during radical surgery for advanced gastric cancer. Um, these are two uh, study, studies of robotic gastrectomies uh, that compare a group using ICG versus uh, a group uh, without ICG. And in the first study, ICG group had a greater number of nodes retrieved at the greater curvature in a stage four uh, vista and at the infrapyloric region, uh, the group six. We know that this is the most difficult part of this uh, surgery. And this uh, second study, it's a Korean prospective single arm study, uh, where recently reported uh, a greater mean number of lymph nodes retrieved in the ICG group, uh, 48 versus uh, 35 in the no ICG group. And uh, these are other two uh, ongoing trials in robotic surgery in this topic. Well, this is the uh, only uh, randomized clinical trial in this topic uh, that include um, 129 patients who underwent radical gastrectomy with ICG, uh, comparing uh, to uh, another 129 patients uh, without ICG. And the primary endpoint was a total number of resected lymph nodes. And this is the protocol. A uh, preoperative preparation was the injection uh, uh, by endoscopy of ICG one day before uh, of surgery in, in four points per tumoral. The total ICG injected was uh, 2.5 milligrams. And uh, the next day, uh, the surgery was 
uh, perform uh, guided for the uh, by the fluorescence. And the result of this uh, randomized clinical trial was the number of resected lymph nodes uh, was greater in the ICG group 50 uh, in compare uh, to the no ICG group. And non-compliance, that is important in this oncological procedure, uh, was greater in the group of uh, patients uh, without ICG. The surgical results uh, were the same, the morbidity uh, was the same, uh, no complications associated with the ICG uh, injection. Okay, I will show you uh, my experience in this topic. Uh, this is our pilot study uh, that includes patients with uh, gastric cancer and um, based in the, in the classification of, of uh, physiological lymphatic flow uh, described uh, by the Japanese uh, colleagues, um, we do uh, two injections of ICG. Uh, the first one in the uh, union of the upper third with the middle, and the second one in the union of the middle and uh, third with the lower. Um, the total ICG injector uh, is 2.5 uh, milligrams, and the injection is uh, at the time of the surgery. In this video, you can see the uh, endoscopic injection. You can see the ICG and uh, uh, the lymphatic flow. This is the second injection by endoscopy at the time of the surgery. You can see the lymphatic vessel very, very clearly. And the lymphatic flow. In a few minutes, you can see the first lymph nodes. And the other uh, way that um, we inject the ICG is uh, by laparoscopic. We use a, a tiny needle, and it is possible to do the injection uh, by laparoscopy. Another example. You can see the, this uh, needle and a little catheter. It's important uh, don't contaminate the, the, the cavity. And again, you can see the lymphatic flow and the first lymph node of the perigastric barriers. So then the dissection start, the procedure uh, goes on, continue the dissection. You can see the left uh, gastropiploic vessels and the group number four, SB. You can see the exactly uh, position of the lymph nodes and they are staying to the to the specimen so you can see the lymph nodes that improve your dissection right now we are dissecting the lymph nodes of a uh, distal uh, greater curvature you can see the lymph nodes and the part most difficult in, in this surgery the infrapyloric lymph nodes. And you can see very well, very, very well, 
the position of the lymph nodes. This uh, video shows the lymph nodes of the lesser curvature, the number three group, group number three. And this video, it's showing the suprapyloric lymph nodes, group number five. Right now, I show you the lymph nodes um, of the left gastric artery and the celiac, celiac trunk and the common hepatic artery. Lymph nodes group seven, eight, and nine. The dissection continue and you can see more clearly the lymph nodes in the common hepatic artery. In this video, you can see the lymph nodes of the celiac trunk and the uh, proximal splenic artery. Another example, little, little lymph nodes uh, can be uh, seen with fluorescence. Maybe these little lymph nodes um, can stay in the abdomen or in the abdomen without ICG. I don't know. Another video showing the splenic artery and the lymph nodes in the distal part. Okay, this is uh, my or our little experience. Um, I will show you only uh, little details. The 80% the are advanced gastric cancer and the lymph nodes retrieved are, were 41, 16% of morbidity. And um, this part, um, this table, table I show you um, only um, uh, this is just to show you that lymph node groups three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 11 are easily visible using fluorescent with ICD. So what about esophagectomy? Uh, what are the unresolved challenges in esophagectomy? Well, gastric tube, tube perfusion and leaks adequate lymphadenectomy and prevention of uh, thoracic duct injuries. Uh, could intraoperative fluorescence improve these, these results? Well, I show you uh, two studies, uh, uh, meta-analysis, this, uh, this meta-analysis uh, of, um, you can see the anastomotic leakage uh, in the ICG group was 10% versus in the control group that it was 23% and in the group ICG group with uh, site modification of the anastomosis the leakage was uh, lesser 5.7% uh, so the ICG uh, group uh, risk reduction was uh, 69%, it's very important. And the conclusion of this uh, meta-analysis was the use of ICG as an in interoperative tool to visualize perfusion and choose the anastomosis site to reduce leaks is uh, promising. Uh, this is the another systematic review. The same thing, uh, the ICG group, the anastomosis Mastomosis leakage was 10% and in the control group, 20%. Uh, again, the leakage of the ICG group that changed the site decision of anastomosis was 6.5%. Uh, 
So the conclusion was that the ICG is safe, feasible, and promising method to evaluate perfusion. This is another study. It's a Japanese study that includes 70 patients who underwent a esophagectomy, and the uh, leaks was 1.4%, and they conclude that the tube perfusion measured at 60 seconds with ICG is sufficient to perform the anastomosis. And they describe the, the 90 seconds rather it's uh, safe and effective for choosing the anastomosis site. And this is, uh, uh, it's uh, also possible to uh, quantitatively measure perfusion. There are already systems that can do it, and this is what did study shows. This is, um, I experienced this was the, the my first uh, subjectomy using ICG. You can see the ICG. It is starting in the arteries of the domain. You can see the gastric tube. You can see the, the arterial phase, and you can see the limit of perfusion. Uh, in this part of the surgery, it's important to mark uh, the, the tissue. And this is in, in the cervical field, in the cervical time of surgery previous to the mastomosis. And this patient uh, in the radiological control on the sixth post-operative day, uh, a small leak was seen with no clinical reper repercussions on the patient. And uh, I did perform endoscopy Sorry. Well, can run. Well, um, the video is not working, but the important thing is uh, I did uh, see the, the little uh, hole of the leak uh, in the extreme of the gastric tube, uh, in the extreme of the line of, of mechanical suture. And um, I did install a nasogenal feeding tube. And looking back, the fluorescence gave me the necessary information of a part uh, with ischemia in the gastric tube, but I did not know how to interpret, uh, interpret it at that time. Uh, currently, uh, uses fluorescence to make decisions. This is uh, a video showing that what uh, we are doing right now. This is the thoracic uh, field and the tumor was marked. You can see the ICG. And this is the abdominal part of the surgery. We will measure the perfusion of the gastric tube. You can see the ICG arriving to the abdomen. This is the right gastroboid vessel. And we can determine the perfuse, perfuse tissue and the limit of this perfusion. You can see clearly the limit of the ICG. It's important that the specimen is uh, completely disconnected of the uh, vascular uh, vessels. You know, the infrared is showing the same, and this is in the cervical field. You can measure again the perfusion. And 
it's important to uh, determine the, the site of the anastomosis. What about uh, lymphatic mapping? Um, um, uh, fluorescence has been shown to be feasible to detect uh, esophageal lymph node drainage in several small series, including peritumor injection of ICG, although this is still under investigation. I will show you my experience in, in this topic. You can see in this video uh, perisophageal lymph nodes. It's very, very clear the fluorescence lymph nodes. And this video shows the infracarinal lymph nodes. This video shows the paratracheal lymph nodes, the acidus vein, and you can see the lymph nodes and the fluorescence very, very clearly. Okay, so in conclusions, ICG fluorescence, it's simple, fast, and in an inexpensive tool. No side effects um, have multiple uh, applications, and ICG um, to measure perfusion could decrease anastomotic leaks, and ICG for lymphatic mapping could have important clinical benefits. Um, regional lymph node sampling for better staging, targeted lymphadenectomy to replace large dissection could decrease operative time and complications, select patients with uh, early cancer for endoscopic resections through laparoscopy and resection of negative sentinel lymph nodes, and of course, uh, the technological development in this area and the increasing availability of more powerful visual system will transform some of these applications into the standard of care in the near future. Of course, more randomized and multicenter trials are needed to validate all possible, uh, possible applications. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Lynn Serini. So we are now going to begin um, asking some of the questions um, that were submitted during your presentation. And just as a quick reminder, if you haven't submitted your questions, you can still do so by typing them into the questions pane that is located at the bottom of your control panel. So here's our first question. What type of visu visualization do you prefer for visualizing the ICG? Black, white, overlay, blue, or green? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I prefer overlay, you know, because you can um, see the fluorescence and you can uh, uh, continue your dissection, you know. It, uh, the overlay right now uh, with uh, 4K vision, um, it, it's very, very um, easy to do the surgery, uh, seeing the, the fluorescence, and uh, maybe the infrared vision uh, have the problem that you can change the vision, you know, and the, you, you stop the dissection. Uh, so I think that it's better the overlay vision. Okay, thank you so much for your response. Our next question is, uh, thank you, Dr. Enrique Lanzarini for a great presentation. It is my first time seeing uh, the laparoscopic injection. What purpose do you use ICG in gastric lymphadectomy? Can you repeat me the final part of the question? 
what purpose do you use ICG in gastric lymphodectomy? Yes. Yes. Uh, currently, uh, I use uh, ICG in a in a pilot study. You know, um, I think that um, it's very useful. Use ICG to do a lymphadenectomy in a radical gastrectomy because uh, uh, you are seeing exactly the position of the lymph node. So the the dissection it's guided, uh, you know, uh, the possibility that a lymph node stay in the patient it's uh, lesser because uh, I see in the lymph nodes. Uh, I think that uh, to teach uh, these techniques uh, it's very important too because it's very different to say uh, to a resident, okay, this is the plane because he, uh, here is the mesocolon, here's the uh, pancreatic head, and this is the posterior wall of the stomach. But you can, you can say this and plus, okay, and these are the lymph nodes, you know? I think uh, that uh, it's very important to teach and to uh, decrease the learning curve, I think. Uh, uh, some studies are showing that the, the number of lymph nodes retrieved are improving. I don't know uh, yet uh, in, my, uh, in, in our experience, in our pilot study, uh, we are comparing uh, yet. Okay, and there's a continuation of that question, and it is, how do you locate the the injection site when you inject ICG lap laparoscopically? Yes, yes. Um, I, I did show in my presentation my protocol. Um, it's uh, two injections. The first one in the union of the upper third of the stomach with the middle. And the second in the uh, union of the uh, middle third of the, of the stomach with the lower. Uh, why? Because uh, this is based in the uh, Japanese uh, studies of the lymphatic um, drainage of the stomach. You know, I think that uh, doing these two injections, uh, the lymphatic flow is going to uh, all uh, different uh, uh, groups uh, uh, of lymph nodes in the first barrier and in the second barrier. And the other important thing that I uh, I think uh, 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 it's uh, I prefer uh, to do the injection at the time of the surgery, not in the day before. I don't have experience injecting uh, uh, in the previous day, but I think that when you inject in the before the day before to the surgery, maybe the uh, fluorescence lymph nodes uh, are more uh, that. Uh, you need to reset, you know, maybe uh, the lymph nodes uh, of the third uh, barrier of the, the, the stomach, you know. Okay, thank you. And do you see the same results when you in inject endoscopically and laparoscopically? Yes, yes, uh, I see the same results. But the well in, in our countries countries in Latin America uh, at endoscopy uh, it's it's more expensive uh, that's why I, I did uh, try to inject by laparoscopy um, in order to uh, don't increase the the cost of the surgery you know. But the results are the same, but uh, you need to be careful uh, with the injection by laparoscopy 
because if you uh, you can contaminate with ICG the the, the abdominal uh, cavity and this uh, uh, can be a problem later to to see the the fluorescence. Thank you so much for your response. Our next question is, is it possible to use ICG to check anastomosis in esophageal defects in newborns? Uh, wow, uh, I don't know. I think yes, <laughs> but uh, I didn't experience uh, all that. Um, I did measure a uh, perfusion in a in a esophageal uh, esophageal in a total gastrectomy, you know, and in I did uh, measure a uh, perfusion in in surgery of a, um, a greater hiatal hernias and, and and so on. A lot of surgeries uh, that uh, you can measure the, the the perfusion. I think that if you have a question about the perfusion tissue in a surgery, the ICG uh, can give you an answer. Okay, thank you for your response. Our next question is, what were the major difficulties to start using fluorescence guided surgery at your hospital? Well, the first one is it's uh, to have the technology, you know, uh, because um, uh, to to do the change uh, to conventional surgery and um, uh, fluorescence uh, guided surgery, you need to have the technology. But uh, right now, nowadays, uh, all the 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 laparoscopic devices, the new laparoscopic devices, the towers of laparoscopy, you know, uh, have the technology or will have the technology. So I think that it's it's uh, think of time that all the laparoscopic devices uh, include the technology to do um, uh, fluorescence. Yeah, so uh, you need to have the technology and then uh, you need to um, learn about the, the different modalities to use uh, ICG and the, the uh, doses that you need and so on. Okay, thank you so much for your response. The next question is, in gastric cancer, we need to dissect at least 29 lymph nodes. A greater dissection does not seem to increase survival. Is it necessary to dissect 40 or 50 lymph nodes? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Um, maybe, maybe it's um, referred to, to it's necessary. It's necessary. Is it necessary to use ICG to improve a lymphadenectomy? Yeah, the the answer is not uh, resolved, uh, but I think that um, think that if you are starting in this uh, type of surgery, ICG uh, could be a good tool. If you need to improve your dissection, I think it uh, will be a very good tool. And um, of course, if you um, are doing a very well lymphadenectomy right now, uh, appear not necessary uh, uh, the use of ICG, but uh, you need to think about uh, the how uh, to improve but in in a global in in, in, a, in a global issue you know uh, the perfusion is important 
to teach in the technique it's important i think uh, if it's possible to decrease the the leakage uh, it's relevant uh, it's a good question but uh, the answer is not yet uh, available okay thank you so much the next question is how much extra surgical time is added if you use fgs in gastric and esophageal surgery yes uh, right now uh, currently uh, is not more time use icg because uh, i i did say uh, previously um, when you use the overlay vision, you can uh, continue the, the dissection uh, without stop, you know, uh, and the time that uh, the, the, you, you need to do the injection, it's a few minutes. It, it's, it's not uh, important the, the, this time. And when, uh, when you uh, measure the perfusion, uh, 90 seconds you need so the the time right now uh, using overlay uh, it's not important for me thank you so much for your response i think we have time for one final question and that question is for gastric lymphatic mapping is submucosal water slash saline injection needed prior to the ICG injection in order to avoid ICG over injection or misplaced injection? Can, can you repeat please? For gastric lymphatic mapping is a submucosal water or saline injection needed prior to the ICG injection to avoid ICG over injection or misplaced injection? Yes, yes, I use uh, distilled uh, water. Uh, uh, previous to injection, uh, to inject uh, ICG and after inject ICG. Uh, a, a little uh, uh, 0 0.5 millilit milliliters, you know? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for your response. That is all the time we have today for questions. If we did not get to your important question, um, we will forward your unanswered questions to Dr. Lanz Lanzarini. So thank you so much, Dr. Lanzarini, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. On behalf of Diagnostic Green and our presenter, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, all of you.